Guido coming at you with a review, and we're going to start with the new Japanese heavies at Tier 5 with the Mitsu 108. The Mitsu Ball. Interesting tank. Kind of looks like a, a what, interwar design, maybe kind of a, a lot of uh, Russian influence, maybe some German influence chucked in right there. That's what the write-up says about the details. Developed in accordance with 9030's concept, dictated heavy breakout tanks were built with light anti-projectile armor and several turrets, which it does have. The tank was considered obsolete and was not in demand by 1942, so basically they did not make this thing or didn't produce it anyway. It's got a 105 millimeter gun. As you can see, it has a cast of thousands that lives in it. Six people. This is a bit of an issue because in the past few lines, it's been nice from Wargaming that they did not give us mixed match crews, but they've gone back to that with this line. There's going to be six in this tank. There's five in the next two, I think. Five, six, seven, correct. And by eight, you get to four people. This one has two, two radio operators. Uh, it gives me a headache, fellas. It gives me a headache. Two radio operators. Let's pretend. Let's pretend that that's historic. Maybe it is. I don't know. If it's not, we'll pretend it is. Why would you even do that, Wargaming? Just please stop with that stuff. It's it's dumb. It really is. But if you're going to play this tank, you're going to run with two radio operators. What I did, fellas, for the whole planning my crew, I'm going to move the crew through. There's two options here, really. One is to just put a throwaway crew in it. There's three. There's three options. The first one is... Free experience, pass it, noted, got it. I like playing the tanks. So, second option is build a crew that you're not going to move forward. Third option is build a crew, but only worry about four of them and move those four forward. And that's what I did. I did commander, gunner, driver, radio operator. And these two, the loader and the second radio operator, were throwaways. Why is that? Because the loader eventually goes to the commander... And you will have a commander, gunner, driver, radio operator with the loader on the commander. So these two will fall off. But remember, the tier 6 and 7, the loader doesn't fall off until the 8. Painful. So those are your three options, fellas. Throw away crew. Free XP pass the whole thing and forget it. Plan your crew such that when you do move it forward, you only move the ones you need. And then, as you can see, this guy got left behind. He's hanging out, cooling his heels, waiting for a crew to show up to play the Mitsu 108, which is going to be a long wait. Saichi Ito, you are in a bit of a purgatory, my friend. Probably not happening. I ran a Rammer Vert, uh, Vert Staff, Rammer Vents, has a V, and an IA to try to tame the dispersion. We'll talk about that, but it is not very good. We had 20 regular AP, 20 of the Magic AP, or the APHE, whatever the heck that is, kind of the Japanese APCR ish thing, although it's not APCR, and then 20 HE rounds, which this thing has a lot of ammo, so no big deal right there. Two large kits and a fire extinguisher because I didn't bother with food on it. It's a tier five. That's what I did. That's my setup right there. How did I do overall before we kind of look at the details of this thing? I didn't play very many games, fellas. A whole six. We did 67% for whatever that's worth. 899 experience average per game. We were averaging 1369 and 268 assist. Uh, damage ratio 2.33, destruction 3.67. Armor use was a little better than I thought, but remember at tier five, you might see some fairly weak guns, so you're going to get some bounces. The armor's not great. It's okay, but it's not he really uh, breakthrough heavy ish. It's called a breakthrough heavy, I believe. That's mostly because that big 300 alpha gun is pretty brutal at tier 5. So stats were okay on it. But again, six, six games is all I had. Let's take a look here then at the comparison I thought was kind of interesting. We've got the Mitsu. Remember, these are all no equipment, no consumables. I just realized recently, by the way, I need to take off the, I need to take off the repair kits because that actually increases the speed at which you repair tracks. It's a small thing, but it, there is still a bonus there. So I took everything off it. It's 100% crew with the top upgraded items. As always, I had the free experience to get all the modules, so I didn't bother with unlocking modules. I just took six battles to get to the next tank with unlocked modules. 
got T1 Heavy, KV1, BDR, and O1. T1, KV1 is kind of the iconic tier 5. The T1 as well. The BDR is known as having a heavy hitting gun. Of course, the OI, if you run the little 12 inch, 12 centimeter, hits hard too. So it actually has more alpha than the Mitsu, but the Mitsu is pretty far and above most of the rest of them here. Penetration of 130 is good. It's competitive with the rest. Obviously, that little heat gun is not so much, or the derp gun. I think that's the HE round, by the way. Right there, the heat has better pen for the OI. OI is kind of a weird thing. It's got the upgraded guns are smaller. Uh, the lower 12 centimeter is a higher upside for absolutely smacking people in the face for 350. So it's it's a weird one. We have gun loading at 13 seconds. I got mine down to a little 10 or 11, something like that. So this is a really long reload for a 105. These are all smaller guns. The BDR is close. I don't. I think it's a 90 millimeter, not a 105 kind of thing. So it does take a while to reload. Come down here. What does that give us? It gives us a very interesting, very low DPM. So hard hitting, but long wait between shots. Whereas these other guys, especially the T1 and the KV1, are rolling around 2,000 uh, DPM, which is a pretty awesome. BDR in between at 1,500 and then the OI at 2,100 because of the ridiculous heat idea, right? To be careful about DPM when you're talking about heat because that's just pure bollocks for the most part. Survivability, the armor is pretty low, fellas. It's one of the lowest here on the list, the BDR, probably BDR-ish level, obviously, right there. It's certainly not KV-1 or even T-1 Heavy, which has pretty good turret armor and decent hull. So it's it's a bit soft. It's a bit kind of like the way it looks, right? A lot of these tanks that are designed like that or don't have really thick armor, and this is no different than those. The speed is okay at 35. It, do, it is relatively slow backwards at 12, but some of these are even worse at 10. So... It keeps up with the rest of these things. In fact, it's faster than the BDR and the OI. If we zing down here to concealment, it has none because it's heavy at tier 5 and spotting is atrocious at 350, although it's not quite as bad as the KV-1 and the BDR G1B. So what do we have here? We have a, a decent, not amazing, gun carriage for a 300 and alpha, 300 alpha 105 millimeter. I did gloss over, didn't I? The dispersion is atrocious at 0.44, although none of these are great. The BDR is pretty nice at 0.36. It's not 0.52 with the big derp gun, but wow, 0.44, which is why I went with the IA at low tier, just to tame that thing a little bit. We'll talk about that a bit on the gameplay example that I have for you right there. And the aiming time is pretty long at 2.88. It's going to feel a lot like the old KV-1 there where it just... Mm, it just feels like it takes forever. So you're going to want to manage both the aim time and the dispersion as much as you can. That's Mocha getting in on the action back there. All right. So that's the comparison with the thing. Here is the tank with my setup right here, although I don't have the crew involved with the brothers in arms. It gave me an 11.61 gun loading. That was a little better because the brothers in arms would have been effective. I've already moved the crew out of there. We've got 1,550 average DPM, which will be a little bit higher again because of the Brothers in Arms action right there. I was not running food as noted. We get a spotting at 358, a little better again with Brothers in Arms. So some bonuses to some of those numbers there make it, make it a lot better than, say, the comparison tool numbers that we looked at. I ended up liking this. I did fight against a bunch of other Mitsus, so we'd have to see what happens later on with the rest of the meta at, at the low tiers. But again, guys, it's a tier five, so. But it is it is fun to run around with a 300 alpha at tier five and just absolutely thump people. Provided you don't get jumped and get gunned down by say a T1 who just keeps pew pewing you. But think about it, T1 at what is it, 115 alpha, that's three shots it needs to hit and pen for every one shot you hit it. Now it's gonna get those three out because it's got a better DPM. In fact, it might get close to four by the time you shoot again. So you really want to avoid getting into a DPM battle with this thing. But if you can thump people and get away or try to trade with a, a 300 alpha thump at tier five and not take any return shots, absolutely brutal tank down at that level. And it's got decent mobility. And unlike the o, uh, O1 Experimental here, it's not quite as ungainly and massive and goofy when you start talking about the 12 centimeter gun. So it, it's got some of this kind of fear factor, although I don't have the 12 centimeter gun on that. It's got a little bit of that fear factor going for it, and it has a little bit of the, say, BDR ability to stay in the fight with aiming.
there you go. So here comes an example. All right, guys, here's the example of gameplay for the Mitsu 108. Look at this thing. It looks a lot like, as we mentioned, a Russian. I am assuming it's copied off of a lot of the Between the Wars tank designs, as it said in the write-up. We're here on Glacier up in the northeast, and we're going to head down to the heavy brawling area. This is early on, so of course there's a bazillion Mitsu 108s in the game. We'll just get through some of the preliminaries here, and we've got the giant convoy headed into the heavy brawling area on the north part of the glacier. Coffee is good this morning, guys. Welcome, by the way. Hope you're having a fantastic day. I don't know, I just did that like this was uh, the beginning of the video, but it kind of is. See, what's going on here is we have a patch, so I have to use before I jump into the game and patch it, I have to get through these particular replays so I can do my reviews of these tanks because they're replays from before the patch. Anyway, you don't care. Nobody cares. We're going to try to cross right here. Just make a runner. Now, some things we know about this is there's a long reload time and they're relatively inaccurate, although there is a T1 and a KV-1SA over there. So I took a chance. I saw some shots go back and forth. I figured I might make it across. Maybe I get hit once. Hopefully, I don't get annihilated. Could easily have taken several Mitsu hits right there, and as we talked about, the Alpha on this thing is 300. So the 105, it's going to hit hard for a Tier 5, guys. It's really hard for a Tier 5. When you have enough people in the north to wrap around, you got one up here, we've got the guy on the inside, we have them stuffed back here. This is a pretty standard situation for this particular map. They brought a lot as well, but they were not as aggressive in crossing as we were. You can get some nice crossfires here between Alexander and me and potentially PWT over here shooting at guys who are hanging out in the middle. Some of these guys are really poorly positioned. What I want to show you here though is this thing does take an amount of aiming and care. Unless you're really close. That's looking pretty good. So a bit of a snap-ish, a poke shot. I don't know what you might want to call that. It's not necessarily a snap because I wasn't really moving the turtle a whole lot. One thing you can do if you want to make sure that you're going to get as good a shot as possible is wait behind the cover, let the dispersion go as, as small as possible, and then move very slowly forward, and you can really manage that. This guy was backing up, and I wanted, I didn't want him really to get away. He wasn't really paying attention to me, and I had done a little bit of the dispersion zoom, but not all of it, enough that I'm able to do that and get out nice. before he shoots me. Also, we're timing shots. We're taking a look at when he shoots. No sense in popping out when he's reloaded. If we can help it, and we know that, we may not. Snafu's getting thumped. The other guy goes around the corner. At least he looked like he was. He went dark, so I hope he's not poking out. I'm going to take a chance here and put another shot on this guy, maybe. There you go. Thought they could cross me. So none of those were fully zoomed, but they were all carefully done, as carefully as I could, to get the shots down range as soon as I could. Things are looking good here. This map gets very dicey about this time right now because guys are going to start pushing in and they will start getting hit. By their campers up on the hill. It's looking good. We should be able to clean these guys up, but I'm not really jazzed about pushing in against the two arty. The guys that pulled back around the corner, as you can see over there, there's a couple of them getting back into cover. There's plenty of these fellas doing what they do right there. It goes back to some discussions we've had recently about abandoning flanks too early, but that one really looked like it was handled, and I just didn't want to push in to a bunch of campers. Now, the good news is, they only have one TD, and it's the Nashorn, and he's already spotted, and he's not up on the hill in a good position, so he's pushed too far forward. But I figure I'm looking at the map that I can go around to the middle here and maybe start thumping the Cheeto and the 2801. Clear out the middle a little bit. Now they got a G new we got to deal with right there, and help the guys that are pushing in the north. So we'll come around here. The depression is decent off the side. You do have to watch for those two turrets. They get in the way. As we talked about when we looked at the design, we'll come on up here, zoom, 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 get a shot on Sword him, blow. there we go. So it is relatively inaccurate, but when you're talking about short range shots, it's not too bad. For longer range, you're going to see me do a couple of those here, we're going to have to try to get as aimed in as possible. I'm up to 1,228 in this battle, it's a romple stomp, it's really starting to look 
go our way in a big way. Now I can't push across that big open area because as you can see over on the east side of the map over there, they really own that whole east side. Now we got these guys. There we go. Zoomed in just enough. I would not have been surprised for that shot to miss. But with a little care, like I said, not all my shots, I don't even know if I had a fully aimed shot in all of those, but they were some of them were close. I was trying to manage it as much as possible though, based on timing and when I could get shots off. Alright, here comes another one. Let's see if we're zooming on him. Zoom, 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 zoom. Alright, there you go. Didn't work out. So dispersion did not help me out there. I wasn't quite fully zoomed. But you can see that he was a little speck in a quite large dispersion circle, so no surprise that shot missed. Keep on pushing in. I'm going to use this cover as much as I can. Where what I really want to do is get up underneath here, because it looks like most of their tanks. Now I'm spotted. It looks like most of their tanks are, you know, in that general area right there. Of course, the Sturbs over there. The rest of them are kind of up there, so I can use some of these outcroppings. Excuse me, outcroppings as cover. There we go. So probably the 2801 saw me. Who knows? You can see my spotting range is not great. My green line is pretty well inside the white line right there, which is the max spotting range. So I certainly do not have max vision on this tank. It's a tier 5. No surprise. Tier 5 heavy. Head on up here. Oh, yeah. She's decently fast on flat ground and downhill. Uphill, it's a bit of a struggle. Power to weight ratio isn't great. Really long tank, I man. Look at this thing. Not quite tog long, but it's not. Uh, it's very tog esque in that re in that regard. Oh boy, got lit. All right, there we go. This guy. Zoom. We'll just zoom her on in here. Okay. I mean, almost. Not quite. Almost. That's another situation right there, fellas, where I figured someone was gonna kill him, so I just took the chance. Yeah, it's not fully zoomed, but it should be close enough. And unfortunately, we have some guys decide to cap. Hopefully they got a cap mission done, or I don't know, needed to move on to the next battle. 1,609 damage, 473 assists with a couple kills, and the little tier 5 Mitsu 108. So some care has to be taken with the aiming, but when you're dropping 300 alpha at tier 5, pretty beastly. And there were a lot of those guys in this game, so as it starts to go on and less people are playing the Mitsu, this is probably a keeper at tier 5, to be honest. It's kind of a brutal little tier 5. And that's uh, that's that. Let's wrap it up. All right, fellas. I hope you liked that uh, review of the Mitsu 108. It's a genuinely competent tank at tier five for whatever that's worth for you tier five players. You might like it quite a bit. What you want to do with this thing is make sure that you don't get into a DPM fight. Right, You don't want to sit there and pew-pew somebody because you have a really long reload. But if you can get the shots off, if you're careful with the dispersion of the gun and the accuracy and the reload time, get your shots off, get back into cover. It is a fairly brutal Tier 5 tank for heavy tank. So nice addition to the game. That's all I've got. Let me know what you think down below. I appreciate your support of the channel as always, and we will see ya.